The romantic clash between the opinionated Elizabeth and her proud beau, Mr. Darcy, is a splendid performance of civilized sparring, and Jane Austen's radiant wit sparkles as her characters dance a delicate quadrille of flirtation and intrigue, making this book the most superb comedy of manners of Regency England. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host, Liam, aka Hemvar, and today I'll be doing a spoiler free review of Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. Pride and Prejudice is an 1813 novel by Jane Austen, and I never thought I would use this music for a, well, a novel of this type, but I also never thought I would review a novel of this type on my channel, so uh, sorry about that. Anyways, Mr. Bennet needs a close male relative to inherit, but he has none, so there is a great urgency for his five daughters to be married to wealth. Elizabeth, the second daughter, is the main character, though the narrator stays rather outside of her head and focuses on the Bennets as a whole. Well, um, a romance, of course, is about, well, well, love stories. It's not a romantic romance, for it's not exotic, uh, nothing's grotesque, um, and I guess it's technically what you would call a domestic realism novel. Um, it lacks the beautiful language, um, the supernatural, tragic trials of the most well-known gothic romance, uh, such as like the mysteries of Udolfo, but it is succinct. Uh, not becoming bloated, which I really appreciate. Um, it is nice and short, so to speak. Uh, other points um, in this story, there is some cases of uh, telling rather than showing, which I'm generally not very critical of, and I, I'm i not going to be critical of it here either. Um, it's an interesting use, I and mean, I think Austin knew what she was doing, and I think she knew her audience as well. Um, it's not my favorite thing, honestly, but some of her dialogue is actually really well done, um, and she does a good job of telling rather than showing, and showing rather than telling when she should, essentially. So, I mean, I guess there's some wits and there's some charm here, uh, especially for those who are interested in, like, Regency-era England. Um, I, I don't have that fascination with that period, especially of the upper class and uh, landed gentry and stuff. So, um, this is a fine novel. I don't think I'd ever reread it, um, but it's not its not bad. Uh, this is someone who doesn't read a lot of novels like this, and there's a reason for that. But I actually am going to have a review for the Mysteries of Udolfo coming out uh, shortly after this, and I will I think I'll contrast it uh, kind of with that since they came out relatively close to each other, and one is very romantic and this one is very domestic, um, which is a difference I don't think a lot are aware of because... Um, when I think of romance, a lot of people probably think of this, but they don't think of the romantic, uh, artistic uh, period, for example. But anyways, um, that is my ramblings. This has been Liam with Liam's Lyceum. I will catch you next time.